Comic books have come up with some pretty cool superpowers over the years, from flying to invulnerability to being really strong and sticky. Good one, Peter. But there's one superpower from the real world that allows otherwise superpowerless people to be all about that superhero life, and that's money. Lots and lots of money. Being rich is a superpower unto itself. Sure, it takes a little extra genius and drive to go from rich to superhero. Otherwise, rich can just turn into making YouTube videos about your supercars. When it comes to rich superheroes, there's one who has it all over the others. T'Challa, King of Wakanda and the Black Panther. In fact, he's anywhere between 2,160 times to 4,200 times richer than Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne combined. Oh yeah, it's good to be king. Wealth is a pretty good fix when it comes to being a superhero. For the most part, even if we were given superpowers, superheroing would have to take a backseat to super paying rent and super eating. As cosplayers have shown us, even putting together a costume is a time consuming and money spending proposition. Plus, yours can't be fragile. Rich solves lots of problems. You want to go for revenge for your parents' murder? Well, it helps to have a billion dollar estate to pay for world traveling and ninja lessons. Want to right the wrongs of your war profiteering ways? Well, those war profits might pay for your sweet, sweet power suit. Just how rich is rich for these superhero playboys? Especially since, you know, they're made up. Well, Forbes and Money magazines have put together estimates of their wealth. Bruce Wayne is estimated to be worth an astounding $9.2 billion, mostly from his inheritance and foundations. Wayne Enterprises continues to be a broad technology company with defense contracts that makes another $31.3 billion in revenue. That's enough to keep one in Batmobiles and Batarangs. Over at Marvel, the resident industrialist turned Avenger Tony Stark, who takes a more hands-on approach to running his tech company, is estimated to be worth $12.4 billion, with Stark's company bringing in $20.3 billion a year. Tony spends a little more on R&D products that don't go anywhere than Bruce, probably. Meanwhile, over in the land of Wakanda, based almost entirely on the value of vibranium alone, T'Challa is worth a mind-boggling $90.7 trillion. Yeah, trillion with a T. Like, if you wanted to get together the money to buy all the vibranium in the world, you'd need the entire gross domestic product of the entire world. That's a $4 trillion loan. Which of course prices out Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark, whose combined net worth is now a seemingly paltry sum of $42 billion. Even if they combine their yearly profits, they would have to save up for the next 1,800 years before they could even make an offer. That number comes from information we got during Doom War. There are 10,000 tons of vibranium tucked away in Wakanda, and the going rate for the precious metal that can do anything is $10,000 a gram. Of course, in Doom War, Dr. Doom also forced T'Challa to make the vibranium inert to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. But nothing is permanent in the comics, of course. Plus, there's the rest of Wakanda and its vibranium-infused technology and people, so they're gonna be fine. Now, that does raise an interesting question, though. When we're talking about the relative kinds of wealth of fictional heroes who spend the bulk of their time suited up and punching superpowered bad guys. Or at least when it comes to Batman, super weirdos. Wealth is measured in different ways, which is how magazines like Money and Forbes can give estimates on their net worth. One of the biggest elements in measuring wealth is adding up assets that are considered an investment value. That is, things that will increase as you own them, making having the thing better than having the money. So that big swanky estate with the full cave of bats and bat-themed gadgets? That's an asset that goes towards Bruce Wayne's wealth. The equally swanky Malibu mansion on a sea cliff, part of Tony Stark's worth. Even the car collection he has in his garage contributes to his worth, which took a $1.5 million hit when he landed on a Shelby 427 Cobra. Ouch. That's an important distinction that matters when it comes time to buy extra armor pieces or batarangs. Do you think Bruce Wayne collects them? That difference in kinds of wealth is called liquid and illiquid. Illiquid isn't something you drink at a Beastie Boys show, no, no. Its assets aren't that easy to turn into money quickly, like a sweet mansion built on top of a bat cave full of bat-themed gadgets, and a butler buying batarangs on eBay. This would mean that Bruce Wayne's wealth and Tony Stark's wealth are slightly different due to the way they decide to get down when the bad guys come to town. Bruce Wayne wants to keep his nocturnal habits to himself, so he creates the public persona of the playboy Bruce Wayne, the ineffectual man-child heir to his parents' fortune and company with just enough involvement to make sure the company does the right thing and no one carefully audits Lucius Fox's research. 
Wayne Foundation also funds a lot of charities and social programs in Gotham. With the inheritance and foundation responsibilities, Bruce Wayne probably spends as much energy hiding his superheroing from auditors and accountants as much as he does the Gotham Police Department. Over at Marvel, Tony's situation is a little different. Tony Stark isn't trying to hide his genius under the act of being a playboy. He is a playboy and also a genius. The song might say Tony Stark will make you feel like he's a cool exec with a heart of steel, but he's really a cool exec with a heart being threatened with shrapnel made of steel. As the CEO in chief, a uh, guy who comes up with things, Tony is more involved in the company and because of this kind of relationship, he's also probably more liquid than Bruce Wayne. By now in the comics and in the MCU, Tony has outed himself as Iron Man, so he's not restricted by trying to pretend he spent a few million dollars partying in Gotham and not making a sweet custom jet car. Of course, in the MCU, Tony has given up control of Stark Industries to Pepper, who he also has married. So Tony still gets profit from ownership of the company, but like Bruce Wayne's inheritance, he gets to spend it willy-nilly. Now things get a lot trickier when we get to Wakanda. T'Challa might be a monarch, but Wakanda isn't really your typical monarchy. There are some antiquated methods of determining political power. You can only challenge for leadership for the country if you're an approved bloodline. And instead of campaigning on your platform of more cool waterfall event spaces, you have to fight the current king. Just because you won the fight doesn't mean that you get to start spending the country's money willy-nilly. While Bruce can pretend to be a playboy and Tony can actually be a playboy, T'Challa has to be a king, which for Wakanda also means suiting up and punching bad guys who might threaten the kingdom. This means that while they're free to buy some sweet sandals that his sister won't like, if he wants a sweet upgrade to his Black Panther suit, the spending has to be justified as part of the operating budget of the Kingdom of Wakanda that also has to pay for the cool shield and hologram that protects the land and the cool ships they fly around in. Before T'Challa opened Wakanda to the world, did they fly out of Wakanda in the cool ships and then sneak in old Land Rovers to go to an airport in Zimbabwe to pretend like their agrarian nation didn't have super jets for some reason? This raises another problem with T'Challa's net worth, aside from the fact that he can lose it by getting beaten up at a waterfall or that he has to run a country, not a company, with it. The number is based entirely on the stockpile of vibranium. Dr. Doom plots aside, that's a combination of liquid and illiquid that probably requires an economics degree to sort out. Should Wakanda start selling vibranium, they would find no shortage of buyers, except that they have a central principle of protecting this technology from getting into the wrong hands, like say, oh, I don't know, Dr. Doom. I mean, it's in his name. However, once vibranium is in the market, things start happening to its value. Right now, it's worth $10,000 a gram, partially because Wakanda won't sell it. Once they're flooding the market with their several tons of vibranium, then the value changes. But since the amount of vibranium is finite, this helps keep the value high. Then all the tricky issues of international monetary policy start to take place, unsexy things like controlling supply to maintain value, and setting the market, and currency policy, and a bunch of other things that aren't as cool as power suits and Batmobiles and energy-absorbing armor. The biggest hitch, of course, is that there isn't enough wealth in the world to buy all the vibranium in the world, and ultimately something is only worth what other people are willing or able to pay for it. So is that $99.3 trillion worth of vibranium worthless? No, because remember, wealth is a superpower. On top of that, T'Challa is able to call upon the projected wealth of his nation, which can buy more than money can. That doesn't even get into the issues of Wakanda's internal economy, as well as how it interacts with other nations, since being a trading partner is something they just started, so monetary wealth is a much harder thing to really conceptualize when it comes to Wakanda and its superhero king. But that's a lot of economics and stuff. The fun stuff is figuring out what one can get up to with that kind of money. With all that vibranium money, T'Challa could buy himself 2,800 Iron Man suits at $7 billion apiece, though they won't be worth much on their own without the $36 million arc reactor. He could buy himself about 2.5 million of those. Certainly, Wakanda is powered by some variation of vibranium, but they can use all those arc reactors to supplement it, or just buy enough arc reactors to power the world. Then T'Challa and Tony could save the world without having to punch anybody. You're welcome, fellas. Or just have a flash mob of Iron Man suits performing the single ladies dance on the surface of the moon. Just in case there's still punching to do, T'Challa could get a new superhero ride. In the real world, leaders of countries already get cool superhero rides, like the beast that carries around the various US presidents. At $1.5 million apiece, he could buy over 60 million beasts, enough to replace the cars of every person in the top 10 car-dense countries of the continent with beasts. That's a lot of beasts. Batmobiles come at a bit of a higher premium, with some estimates for the tumbler at $18 million. That would mean he'd only be able to buy a paltry $5 million for the world's best demolition derby. Who wouldn't want to watch a demolition derby with all Batmobiles?
That's the difference in wealth between billionaires like Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne and a monarch superhero like T'Challa the Black Panther. What kind of powers would you give yourself with that kind of wealth? Start collecting those loose batarangs and let us know what you'd do with the money in the comments. While you're there, why not subscribe to CBR and ring that notifications bell? It'll make you rich in the latest content. Thanks for watching.